Okay, we're taking a look at the VW type engine case right now for inspecting and checking the lubrication system function. The case itself is a two-piece case where both halves of the engine are connected together. So it's really important during the time of the rebuild or the overhaul to make sure that the pressure regulating and pressure relief valve circuits are checked and inspected. A lot of manufacturers in the truck industry and in the automotive industry tend to use a combination capacity pressure relief and pressure regulating valve. So that unit is together as one and it controls the volume of oil that's being delivered to the engine from the pump as well as controlling the maximum system pressure through the relief valve. Either valve, whether it's a combination capacity or individual valves, can stick in pressure increase or pressure decrease. And if we have a regulating valve that sticks in a high pressure, the pressure relief valve in the system will override if the regulator allows too much volume and pressure to be delivered to the engine bearings. So the pressure relief valve would then open, dumping some of that pressure that's being developed under the regulator back to the sump. When I refer to the sump, I refer to the area or the volume area in the oil pan itself. We call that the sump. So all that oil does return back to the sump and then gets filtered either through a bypass or a full flow uh, oil lubrication system. So if we take a look at this, it's around a 1973 VW Beetle engine. It's a type one engine case. It's a magnesium alloy case. And one of the things that we have to do is to take a look at that pressure relief and regulating valve. So I've gone ahead on this engine, and if we take a closer look, I've gone ahead and I've removed this plug with an impact driver, and a lot of times it takes a bit of effort to get it out. There is a steel or an aluminum or maybe even a copper gasket that is used to seal the lubrication system. So internally also is the spring that the manufacturer uses to control the movement of the piston. Now one tool that I want to show you here and the use of this tool uh, for accessibility to the engine is a driver or a puller that actually goes down inside the passageway in the engine and then we have to grab a hold of the piston. Because the piston is down inside the block about two inches makes it very hard to grab a hold of that piston to get it out. And this engine in particular has gone through a hot tank. It's been cleaned externally and in internally. And one of the last things we have to do is make sure all the passages are open so that we can clean those galleries and no pistons or valving or springs may stick. And that's one of the things we have to adhere to. So I'm going to go ahead and install this tool. And the paws on the tool expand when we crank this tool down that opens them and bites into the internal of the piston. When it bites into the piston, then we can actually pull the piston out of its bore. To get this piston out of here right now, it's going to be pretty complicated because there's no way to actually get behind that piston and push it up and out. So we use this driver. So I'm just going to take this driver, install it in and fit it into the piston. And I'm just going to take my hammer and tap it down to the bottom of the bore. And I can feel the piston moving down right now. And we're going to listen for an audible tone that tells me that I've made it to the bottom of the bore. Which now tells me that the tool is driven down inside the piston. And now I can crank the paws of the tool out and hopefully be able to lift this piston out of the bore. So I've just laid the case down on its side now with the tool installed and it's a pretty tight piston that's in there so I'm just going to tap on the tool and I've put a bit of effort off film to pulling this and it was very seized. So you can see on the piston now that it's removed it's still attached to the tool can see that there's a lot of debris actually on that piston. There is some metal that is showing there which is indicative of engine bearings wearing out. And this particular engine did have worn crank bearings. So the material that you're seeing on my fingers and off the end of this piston 
um, are trapped into the lubrication system and that's not something we want to have for a new build. So we're going to continue on with the one at the front of the engine or the second uh, piston for control and this one has a fairly long spring and again we're just going to take the tool and put the tool up inside the bore. I'm going to use my hammer tap it into the piston and you could hear it bottom. Now I'm just going to expand the collar on the tool to bite into the piston and and this one's coming out a lot easier and we can pull the piston out. The important thing is here is that if we take a look again you can see the debris that's sitting underneath that piston and there is some grinding compound in there maybe some sand some carbon some soot lots of debris from the cleaning and again leaving this in the engine during a build can actually cause a defect especially if these valves are not moving and controlling the regulation and the pressure relief of the lubrication system oil pressure